Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is a continuing series of lectures of Gnostic anthropological studies. Today's lecture is number 14, Universal Sound. My host today is Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you, Jim? Fine. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for inviting me. It's a real pleasure, a real honor to be here and to be able to be in touch with humanity, you know. I feel we owe so much to the universe and this is why it is really our duty, some kind of our mission to to interrelate with the entire human race, to share, you know, knowledge, whatever we have learned. So we learn from each other. Now, today, universal sound, what is it? What is universal sound? Did we know that there is music in the universe? According to Gnostic anthropology and Gnostic cosmology, music emanates from the absolute, descended from the absolute. The absolute is the homeland of the spirit, the most realistic reality of all realities the homeland of the spirit, the star of Bethlehem, a universal spiritual dimension, the highest dimension of all dimensions. Now, according to the law of seven, the law of organization of the universe, based on the seven musical notes, you see, there is then there is music in the universe. How can we explain that the planets, the whole universe is in constant motion You see, the planets are dancing to a music that we cannot hear. But some people can listen to it. Geniuses like Beethoven and Mozart, when they were inquired about their incredible, powerful capabilities to compose that majestic music, majestic symphonies, they said, well, we can hear the music. We only write down the notes and we share it with the entire human race. So what about our particles, our atomic particles, molecular particles, our cellular particles? They are also dancing, you know. We look very solid, but we are not. There is a space in between cells, molecules, and atomic particles. And they are also dancing in a spiral way. Same thing with the universe. So there is music everywhere. Everything is coming from vibration. And that vibration is sound. When the sound is organized, we call it music. If you make an experiment, let's say you play violin and you put some sand on a piece of glass, do it if you know how to play violin. And watch the sand. When you're playing the notes, the sand will be moving, will move. You know, that proof that sound generates movement, vibration. Now, what about an army? You know, an army marching on the street, and now they are crossing a bridge. Did you know that when an army is going to cross a bridge, they have to stop marching? Did you hear that before? Because if they continue marching, they will destroy the bridge. The vibration of marching is so, you know, mechanical and so powerful at the same time that will destroy the, through vibrations, will destroy the contraction of the bridge and the bridge will collapse. So the Bible speaks about the sound, you know, universal sound. It's the same verb. And the verb, according to the Bible, is God. And God is the verb. So it's a creative force. So then we have to understand that Everything that we do has a tremendous influence within the universe and within ourselves. Our negative thoughts, which are atomic, they can kill other people or can kill ourselves. Our negative emotions, which are molecular, same situation. Hatred, you know, the psychology of war. Or when we swear, some people cannot speak without swearing. They don't see what they are doing to themselves. They are destroying their human organism 
and they are affecting the human organism of other people. The swearing is connected with hatred. You see, what if we do the opposite? Positive thoughts, positive emotions. We can do an incredible positive, you know, we can create, we can do a lot of good things if we do that. We can heal ourselves and we can heal people. Positive thoughts, positive emotions, like love, respect, you know, a sense of duty, a sense of justice, awakening our soul, consciousness, instead of subconscious or the ego. The ego is me, 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 based on fear. But if we learn to respect and love, it's not me, 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 me anymore. It is us, all of us are important. What about classical music? Beethoven and Mozart. If you play classical music at home and you have those interior plants, they will grow up beautifully. It's already proven in farms. They have done experiments and chicken can produce bigger eggs. Did you hear that before? What about cows? They, when they produce milk, the milk will become stronger, healthier than before. What about hospitals? You know, it's already proven scientifically that people can be healed faster if we put classical music. What if we do the opposite? If we put heavy metal rock music, we kill plants. What about fights at home when there is violence, psychological violence or physical violence? We not only kill plants, also we destroy the psychology of children and the psychology of couples. Relationships end because of that. We kill respect and love because of violence, because of negative vibrations, negative destructive music. Did you know that all languages, how many languages do we speak? A thousand? thousand different languages, you know? Well, did you know that they are all coming from a common source, a common root? So all languages descend from a golden language. And this golden language has been created in accordance with superior cosmic laws. We could say this golden language is an angelical language. The superior beings speak in heaven. Some people call it also the mantric, mantric language. Mantras. Have you heard about that? You see, and this is why this is extremely important to be understood. That the golden language is a language of power to heal. You know, many prayers, many prayers, if you, for example, if you are a Christian or a Catholic, our Father, that prayer is an incredible, powerful prayer because it's also a negotiation between the person who is praying for help and also superior beings, the cosmic Christ or the divinity, because it's an exchange of, you know, you're asking for something, but you're also offering something back. You know, when you say that you are willing to be forgiven, as long as you learn to forgive those who have offended you, well, this is an exchange of consciousness between us and the divinity. We are asking the divinity to help us with the condition that we are ready to pay for it, for that help. How are we going to pay for it? Annihilating our own ego, annihilating our defects, our vices, our negativity, our self-destructive thoughts and emotions and actions. You see, everything is connected with awakening consciousness. We are here to awaken consciousness. And, and where there is more consciousness, there is also more light, because light and consciousness are the same. So every planet, every cosmic particle, every human cell, every molecule has the same purpose, to transform into consciousness. Because we are subconscious. We are lower than consciousness. 
So that's the purpose of music also. And that's also the purpose of mathematics. You know, we are going to be giving you more information about the golden language, the mantric language. And for example, if you study any language, they will be talking about five vowels, you know, in every language. But in reality, according to the mantric language, to the golden language, there are seven, seven vowels. And the seven vowels are E, E, O, U, A, M, and S, the sound S. Now, did you know that these seven vowels resonate within the universe? They are part of the cosmic music. They are part of the universal sound. When Beethoven and Mozart were questioned, how can you hear this uh, music, this majestic music, they said, they had awakened a superior sense called the inner ear. But how can we get closer to those superior beings like Beethoven and Mozart by awakening also our inner ear? And one of these seven sounds, one of the seven vowels will help us to awaken that inner ear. You see? So let's repeat them. E, E, O, U, A, M, S. So the sound E, the sound E is connected with, you see, our superior intellect, which is the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. The sound E, the sound E, you see, it's incredible, you know, you, you get that sound in any name, many names have the sound E, and also many words pronounce the sound E. But because we are not awakened in our consciousness, our soul, we don't perceive the vibration. And if that vibration is really healing us or affecting us in a negative manner. So the sound E, again, will be able to awaken the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. The pineal gland is connected with superior senses. We explained that before. The superior sense called inspiration, which is inhaling knowledge from the universe through our pineal gland, which is the crown of our head. So if we pronounce the sound E, we'll be able to awaken our atrophied pineal gland but also will be influencing our pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is connected with the third eye or creative imagination, and some people call it clairvoyance. So the sound E will be able to help us to awaken our inspiration and also our creative imagination, and in between both, creative willpower, because those two glands are atrophied, you know, because of our unconscious conduct, subconscious behavior, that we don't realize the purpose of life, that we are here to awaken our consciousness. So if we practice this sound, and I would recommend that you pronounce the sound seven times, okay, like, like singing, okay, let's try to do it, like something like this. You breathe in and you exhale now, pronouncing the sound. E and if you can do it seven times, it would be wonderful. It's going to help you to awaken again the superior part of your brain, which is the superior intellect, which is creative imagination, and inspiration. Now, what about the second sound or the second vowel, the sound A? The sound A is connected with our thyroid gland and it's also connected with the superior sense which is the inner ear. The inner ear of Beethoven and the inner ear of Mozart. And all classics, people who are composers, even of pop music, they also have this inner ear a little bit awakened because 
they can hear the music in their own head, in their own brain, before they write it down, when they are creating new music, original music. So, but, what do we all would love to try to awaken the superior sense so we can perceive the majestic music coming from the universe within. So the sound A will help us to awaken this superior sense called the inner ear and also connected with our thyroid gland. Let's do it together again, if you can. Let's breathe in. When we exhale, we pronounce the sound A. Hey. If we can do it seven times, each one of them would be great every day. What about sound number three? The sound O. The sound O is connected with our heart. Did you know that our heart is more than a muscle to pump blood into the system? Our heart is also an endocrine gland. We said that before in our lecture number 13, I understand. So the sound O will help us to awaken our intuition. Intuition is a superior sense. It's a superior emotion. It's also direct knowledge without thinking. It's like being able to listen to the inner voice of our divine being coming from within ourselves, telling us what to do. So it's direct knowledge without thinking. We can make a lot of mistakes while we're thinking, but if we learn to quiet the inferior mind, the inferior intellect, which is thinking, we'll be able to, you know, awaken to be able to listen to the inner voice coming from the heart. So the sound O, oh, the sound number three. So let's try to do it together. We inhale again. Now we exhale the sound O. Oh. O. Oh. If we can do it seven times, would be amazing every day, seven times each one of them. What about number four? The sound number four, the vowel number four, which is U, the sound U. It is connected with our pancreas, our solar plexus. Did you know that our pancreas is also an endocrine gland connected with what? A superior sense called telepathy. Did you know that? Telepathy doesn't come from the brain. Telepathy it's an emotional connection. So the pancreas is the inferior emotional antenna, the inferior emotional center. When we pronounce the sound ooh, we'll be able to reactivate our pancreas, even to heal our pancreas. People who suffer, you know, from diabetes, they can heal themselves, practicing the sound ooh. We recommend to do it also seven times, you know. Let's do it together. We inhale, now we exhale, pronouncing the sound U. Seven times would be great if we can do it every day. What about number five, the sound number five? The vowel number five, which is A, ah, the sound A. Ah. The sound A ah is connected with our thymus gland allocated in our lungs, in our lungs. You know, and this is very much needed to reactivate the memory. We could call it the genetic memory. If you believe in past lives, well, we could say the memory of past lives. If you don't believe in on it, you don't accept it at the moment. Well, we could say genetic memory, the memory that we carry in our genes from our ancestors. You know, according to Gnostic anthropology, we were our own ancestors. We came back in our own blood. But if, if you don't agree with it at the moment, well, let's call it genetic memory. So we carry the experience from our ancestors from, for millions and millions of years since humanity appeared on Earth. You see, so the sound A ah, will help us to awaken that gland atrophied 
called Timeless Gland. The sound A ah, seven times again. Let's do it together. Let's inhale and we exhale with the sound A. Ah. Try to do it seven times. People who enjoy singing, you know, it'll be much easier for them to be able to do it. It will help them also to become better singers, more conscious singers about the power coming from within. What about sound number six, which is the sound mmm, mmm. You know, this sound is connected with the entire organism. It's, it's the best way to awaken the fire within. The fire concentrated in every cell, in every atomic particle, and at the same time, our genitals. The fire within is very much concentrated in our sexual energy. The sound mmm, we could say, is at the bottom of the spine, and also will be able to move the energies through the spine into the entire organism. So let's repeat now together the sound mmm. Let's inhale and we exhale saying mmm. Let's try to do it seven times a day, seven times. E A O U A mmm. Seven times each one of them. What about sound number like the sound of the fire. You know, have you heard the sound of a fire? Doesn't it sound like this? Now, this sound is also connected with the spine, the upper part of the spine, but at the same time, it will help us to heal the entire organism and give us energy, you know, similar to the sound mmm. So, seven times you know this sound let's practice it together now let's inhale hold it exhale pronouncing the sound let's try to do it seven times seven okay so all all of them together will become 49 sounds if you do it at once you will experience an incredible, incredible vibration within the entire organism to heal yourself and also to change the vibrations of the place where you are. You can improve the vibration of your home. You will make them more powerful, more harmonic, more beautiful, more creative, more positive. You can really improve life around you pronouncing these seven sounds every day. You're not going to spend more than 10, 15, or 20 minutes maximum pronouncing the seven sounds seven times each one of them. Jim, I'd like to ask a question regarding what you just said because we're dealing with the seven uh, sounds, basically the seven fundamental sounds, and the problem with English-speaking people and vowels, okay? If you've ever heard someone from the United Kingdom talk about Australia, okay, or America, okay, they always put the er at the end of the a, which is a vowel. There's an international organization called FIFA or FIFA, F I F A, and you hear them in the news all the time. Maybe by the time the listeners hear this podcast, the uh, uh, FIFA will no longer be in the news. But it's interesting that people from England call it FIFA and people from America call it, uh, no, just the opposite. They're, it's called FIFA in the UK and the Americans call it FIFA. Well, E and I. And that goes directly to what you were saying about the vowels because I've read uh, some of Samuel and Vera's books. And here's the problem. For an English-speaking person to read Samuel's books and look at the way the letters are written, it's very, very possible to uh, make a mistake for an English-speaking person. And for example, the letter E written in a book, it's E, okay? But is it really E or is it um, 
I because I's and E's are interchanged quite a bit in English. I, E, E. Some people would pronounce that differently. The letter A written in a book, okay? We're from, I'm from Canada, A. So, <laughs> but basically, A, A, E, A, E, A changes into E for, mo for most English speaking people. And also, you said the the second vowel was was written letter A, right? That's A, ah, right? Is that A ah or A? That's A, right? The second is A, yes. Okay. A, A. So the uh, third, fourth, the f the fifth one is written letter A. How would that be written? Yeah, it's basically you know the way I've done it in English is uh, I put an H after the, the yeah. sound. Yeah. Yeah. I H. So then we will pronounce it E instead of I. Yeah. A will be an E will be a, a H. Okay. So can then the most important thing is the sound. Yes, can I ask you to do one thing for the for the recording to say w how it's written and then pronounce it and then go go through each of the vowels. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yeah, so the sound E we we should write it I H and we pronounce it E. E. The most important thing is the vibration that we produce when we speak, on we, when we are singing, on when we are talking, whatever, and even when we are thinking, you know, sometimes we are thinking different words or different sounds. The sound E is E-H, but we pronounce it E. E. The sound O, well, that's instead of O, it's not O, it's only O, O, H, O, H, connected with our harp, and the sound again is O. Now, U, instead of U, is only the sound in English is U with an H, so we pronounce it U, U. Connected with the pancreas, we can heal our pancreas and reinforce the capability to communicate telepathically. Does it sound incredible? Yes, it does. But it is real. It's been experienced a million times. And in Gnostic anthropology, we teach that and we practice that. And we all learn from it. The sound A, ah, instead of A, so it is A, but written the letter A with an H, so we pronounce it A. Ah. Ah, connected with our thymus gland. Remembering our past lives or, you know, genetic memory, awakening the consciousness about the experiences coming from our ancestors, recorded in our genes. And the sound M, mm, that's easier, M, mm, we enlarge the sound. Mm. And the sound s is more, also more clear. S, the seventh sound. Now, e e o u a m s. These are connected with all languages in the universe. Not only from the Earth, but from every planet within the galaxy, within our Milky Way. This is very very important. Now. Some people who practice yoga, Tibetan yoga or Hindu yoga or, or Japanese, they, they practice the mantra OM, you know, OM, 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 for hours and hours and hours. And some people who don't understand, you know, this kind of knowledge, they make fun of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, you're chanting, you know, you're crazy individuals. But in reality, you know, when you make fun of something you don't understand, you're in trouble, my friend, because ignorance is a sin. Knowledge is power. Before criticizing it, why don't you try it? Do it. And stop being wimpy regarding having access to knowledge. Can I ask a question? Of course. What does the um, person practicing this expect to accomplish? This in my view, this in my view is the beginning of, um, I don't want to say shamanism, but basically if you can heal yourself, 
and you can change your environment just through mantras or is it mantra or mantram? Yeah, it depends of the language, you know. It is mantra, mantra, or yeah. mantram also could be also mantra. Yeah, but basically you can begin to change the world that you live in through this, not only inside of your own body, but also the, the world around you, right? That's correct. You know, essentially, if you combine the two sounds, O oh and M, mm, OM, um, you're healing your heart. For those people who have trouble with their heart, you know, and also the sound M mm, will be awakening the fire within. So healing the heart means also awakening intuition, a superior sense connected with emotional intelligence, direct knowledge, you know, perfect tune with the divinity. So we can make less mistakes or no mistakes. And the sound OM will give us the fire, the rejuvenation of the entire system. The entire human organism will rejuvenate. So OM for hours and hours and hours will awaken intuition, a superior sense, direct knowledge about reality without thinking and also rejuvenating us plus what you said rick will be changing the vibration of the room and even the vibration of the universe so ignorance is a sin ignorance is weakness you know it's a coward attitude when we enjoy being ignorant knowledge is power you know don't be afraid of knowledge Learn to be a leader, stop being a follower. Okay, here we are not asking you to follow us. We are asking you to experience it. And then we talk. Then we exchange experiences. Okay, don't, lead, don't follow us. Follow your inner being. Follow your God within. And then we'll be able to talk. You know, in an equal position to each other. In a loving and friendly, you know, and relationship between all of us. Can I ask another question? Of course. This relates to a movie I just saw. It's called The King's Speech. And um, it's been out for a while. Many of our listeners may have already seen the movie. Some may have not. But just in case you have not seen the movie, I highly recommend it. It's all about, what is it, King George the Sixth? I think it is in the 1930s before the war with hitler this is a member of the aristocracy who never wanted to become the king and ever since a little boy he had problems stuttering and at that time uh, he knew that he would never be the king but circumstances um, made it so that he had no choice in the end but the movie is extremely interesting from the point of view of your lecture, Jim, because it has to do with universal sound, voice. Here's a man who stuttered. Uh, as the movie progresses, you find out what the reasons for the stuttering were. And his voice uh, consultant, the doctor who was um, expert who was working on him, got um, worked with a lot of ex-warriors um, who were returning from the war with post-traumatic uh, shock and for some reason many of these soldiers were able to speak quite normally before they went to war and when they came back from war they were stuttering and stammering and he acted as a counselor for many of these soldiers and began to understand what the underlying problems were for why people were stuttering and his discovery was basically fear and the the, the trauma of having um, been in a war is is obviously very um, uh, it will it will upset anyone I, I don't care who you are if you're in a war you're you're not going to be the same person the movie went on to uh, show how this uh, assistant this helper helped the king uh, get before a microphone and the microphone was the big enemy because at that time in the 1930s the microphone went into uh, British Broadcasting Corporation transmitters they transmitted around the world at that time it was the internet it was satellite TV they didn't have any of that stuff back then that microphone represented him speaking to the entire world and he had these internal fears to deal with, these what in Gnostic terms we would call egos. 
the egos were preventing him from talking normally. And I know you're uh, quite involved in uh, teaching this sort of thing yourself, aren't you, Jim? I just thought that, that this yes. kind of a story would relate very well to the lecture that we're giving right now. You're right, 100%, Rick. Thank you for bringing me, you know, this, uh, this idea. Um, you know, I've been teaching for 30 years drama, Stanislavski method, called method acting in, in the U.S. and North America. Uh, and Stanislavski method is a very complete technique to awaken our capability to communicate better and better. So I also teach public speaking because this is part of the monologues in drama. So through my, my 30 years of experience, I met a lot of people who were stuttering, you know. And after they took our training, in a year or so, they were not stuttering anymore. Because, you know, there are many reasons, unless it's a physical problem, which is more complex. But when it is not physical, it's only psychological. As you said, it is fear. Fear of what? <laughs> well, it's ego, you know, it's fear of looking ridiculous, fear of, fear of being criticized. You know, when people have no self-esteem, they end hating themselves, you know, they don't like themselves. And there is a moment that they hate themselves. But you know, and in drama, you learn to awaken your voice, to develop your voice. Stanislavski used to teach drama and opera together. My training is not as complete as Stanislavski, it's only drama. I'm not an opera singer, so I wouldn't be able to teach opera. But these seven sounds have influenced many of my students who are also into acting and singing at the same time. You know, and then what I teach to them is also pranayamas. It's a yoga technique. Pranayama is learning to breathe and to awaken, you know, also our diaphragma technique. Have you seen the way babies breathe? You know, when they inhale, they move the oxygen through their lungs into the stomach. So you see the, their little tummy going up and down. You see, and that's the normal way to breathe. Listen to this carefully. Please remember my words. When we are babies, we breathe the perfect way. We grow up and we stop breathing. Why? We, we don't breathe anymore. This is why people, why do we get nervous or we fall into depression or anguish, you know, or we develop negative thoughts, negative emotion, because we don't breathe properly. Our two lungs are supposed to be two balloons that have to be filled with oxygen. You know, in the near future, we'll be talking about how can we feed our beautiful, majestic human organism in a proper manner, because we don't know how to feed ourselves. And breathing is one of these ways of giving food to our blood. When babies use their lungs in a complete way, complete manner, the oxygen gets inside of the lungs and through the lungs moves through the blood into the entire system and purifies the, bl the blood and the, and the system. And this is why when we stop breathing, we only use the upper part of the lungs. And when we use the upper part, well, we're not using our capabilities properly out of ignorance. You know, I don't know why doctors don't teach people to breathe. It should be part of their educational techniques to teach their, you know, their clients. You know, this is something so simple, learning to breathe. We don't know how to breathe. And this is why people end into smoking, taking drugs because they are nervous. You know, they need to relax. People get drunk, believing that that way they are going to relax, etc., etc. We kill ourselves because we don't breathe properly. So I teach my students to breathe. When you learn to breathe, you improve the quality of your voice. Your voice will be soothing and stronger. Because when you learn opera, you also use your lungs completely. And the lungs become so filled so fulfilled with oxygen that they have to accommodate within the solar plexus and even the back. And this is why 
Pavarotti, he could break windows with the power of his sound, you know, majestic sound. So this is the healing for stuttering that I have applied into my student for many years and it worked beautifully. You know, even myself, when I was a, a little boy, I was extremely shy. And through pranayamas, when I became 14 years old, I learned the pranayamas at that age. Well, I changed my life, you know. You know, pranayamas are really at the root of Gnostic teachings. And in, um, in the decades past, I, I have been involved in something called rebirthing. And rebirthing is, was, it's not Gnostic necessarily, but it, it adds something to the whole notion of breathing. What rebirthing did was they basically taught you how to hyperventilate. And when you hyperventilate, the first thing that happens is your hands start to get all twisted up. But they teach you to breathe through that. And eventually you will become, begin to relax. You, you keep hyperventilating, keep breathing, keep breathing. And if you're in a comfortable chair, on a comfortable couch, in a bathtub, or someplace where there's no sensory perception, you're, uh, they've even done it in chambers, okay? In, uh, inside water, inside chambers, and so forth. But the idea behind rebirthing was that you will eventually get to the point where you're, you will start to have memories of your birth, and you can actually remember being born. And I actually did this uh, years ago. It's uh, not anything I, I recommend to people because uh, I think Gnostic, Gnostic teachings are much, much superior beyond anything like that. But it does hit home at one fundamental thing, the power of air going into the lungs. And when you connect thoughts with the process of breathing, that really is the beginning of some, uh, a realization that most people couldn't possibly imagine what would happen. Do you agree with that, Jim? Yes, of course. Yes, it's beautiful what you're saying, Rick. Now, allow me to say something. What's the meaning of the word pranayama? Pranayama is a Hindu word that means the Holy Spirit that lives within the air. The Holy Spirit of Christianity in the Hindu religion, they call it Shiva, Lord Shiva. What is that? We said in other lectures that the Spirit is fire. And the Divine Mother, the wife of the Holy Spirit, or Mother, Mother is water. So we are made of water and fire. So when we breathe properly and we learn to inhale the oxygen properly, we learn to use our lungs completely, the fire that lives within the air, because it's already proven, you know, what we call electricity is the same fire, is the same solar energy. And in a religious perception, we call it the Holy Spirit or Lord Shiva, according to the Hindu religion. So when we inhale the oxygen properly, we are inhaling also the Holy Spirit that lives within the air, within the universe. And because we have already fire within, being in touch with our own inner fire, we will get the boost of energy, you see? So that way we can rejuvenate in an incredible way. We can rejuvenate, you know, even we can heal ourselves because the immune system will be reinforced. You know, let me tell you something, you know, this is a personal experience. I remember I had the flu when I was 17 years old. And my doctor told me, you have to stay at home, young man, for a week, drinking liquid and all of that. And I had a very important exam, you know. And then I, I didn't, you know, like the idea of staying at home, but high fever, running nose, coughing, you know, I was really dead, you know, I felt miserable. Suddenly, after I slept for so many hours, I woke up. Sunday night, my exam was at 8 o'clock in the morning on Monday. Sunday night, 10 p.m. I did the pranayamas for six hours. I sit down on my bed. It was hard because I didn't have the energy, not even to sit down, but I did it. I insisted and I insisted and I insisted. I needed to defeat the virus of the flu. And between 10 p.m., 11 p.m., midnight, one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, 
I stopped doing the pranayamas. I was sweating in an incredible way. I always say I was sweating like a horse. And I killed the virus of the flu. So pranayamas, you know, is also sound. It's vibration. I brought the Holy Spirit that lives in the air into my body, the fire within, in touch with the fire from outside, kill those viruses, you see? And my doctor couldn't believe it because I went to have my exam at eight o'clock and I passed the best exam of my entire life. Number 100 points, 100 points, perfect exam. I will never forget it. So we have the power to heal ourselves. But ignorance again is a sin. Knowledge is power. Don't ever forget that. And also, in, in cold weather, in winter, you can survive. Let's say you are driving in the middle of nowhere. There is, a, a, you know, snow everywhere. And you get lost in the middle of a highway where there are no vehicles. And suddenly you cannot continue going and you have to spend the whole night in the middle of nowhere. You can die frozen to death. If you do these pranayamas, my friend, all night long, you will need to sleep because you will recharge your batteries, inner batteries, so much. You will be awakened all night and sweating in the middle of the cold weather and you will survive. You will survive. The opposite, in summertime, in Europe, many European countries, in France, we've been told through the news, thousands of old people died because of the heat. People who were poor, they didn't have the money to buy the equipment to bring, you know, air conditioner, air conditioner to bring, you know, what they needed to survive to the, to the heat. They died. Well, if you do pranayama reversed, listen to this, then you can see how incredible the human organism is designed by mother nature. If you breathe through your teeth like this, you inhale through your teeth and you exhale through your nose, do it for 10 minutes, you will feel fresh. And you do it for an hour or longer, you're not going to die from the heat. You can survive. And people in India, those gurus, those yogis, they teach this knowledge. In India, you have the jungle, a lot of heat, and you have the mountains, you know, with a lot of snow. Well, these people can survive. They walk for 40 years through the entire country with their disciples around them, facing all kinds of dangers, and they know how to survive because they know how to tune with Mother Nature. This is all what I wanted to tell you today. Universal sound. What is the difference between from an esoteric point of view, breathing through the mouth and breathing through the nose. I, I've heard so many people say you go one way or the other way. W what? Why? You know, this is also ignorance, my friend. A lot of ignorance. We've been told if we breathe through our, our mouth, won't be good. Come on, you know. The, the problem is the, is the immune system. Because we commit so many sins against our own organism that the immune system is kaput has collapsed in most of people. There is a flu epidemic and everybody gets it. When you know how to dominate, you know, your organism, and we will teach that, you know, we will teach that eventually through our lectures. How do we reinforce our immune system? Then, of course, we'll be protected against all kinds of, uh, kind of viruses. So if we learn how to feed ourselves, and in a lecture in the near future, we'll be talking about that. How to feed. We don't know how to eat. We don't know how to breathe. You know, something very important in our lives. We don't know how to eat. We don't know how to breathe. We don't know how to think. You know, this is also food. We don't know how to meditate. And we don't even know how to make love. They are all food for the organism. When we learn how to do it. How to feed the entire human organism in accordance with the laws of nature and in accordance with divine superior cosmic laws. You see, and this is the problem. So it doesn't matter, you know, it depends on what you want to get from your breathing, you know. You want to get heat, okay, let's do it this way. Use your, your nostrils to inhale, you know, and you ex exhale through your mouth. Or even you can uh, inhale, you can alternate your nostrils. 
you you cover one nostril, you inhale, and you exhale from the other nostril. The nostril you exhale, now you inhale. Do that for a half an hour. You will sleep like a baby. You don't need pills to sleep at night. Come on, you know, don't kill yourself. And also, you need to reinforce your energies. Do it for one hour. I teach this to my acting students, to my drama students, how to relax and how to reinforce your energies. Do it for a longer period of time and you will become more creative. You are relaxed, you are rejuvenated, and also you become as a child, as spontaneous as a child. You have no fear, you are relaxed, you are creative, and you are also you are a happy individual, happier than average people. When you breathe through your teeth, no, I, I mentioned that, through your teeth, close your open up your mouth but breathe in through your teeth like this it's like when you when you burn your tongue or you are having a spicy food and you and you do this immediately you create coal a coal energy within your organism and you exhale through your nose that's the way to do it to create, you know, a cold environment within and outside of your organism. And if you do it for an hour or longer, you won't suffer. You won't suffer. You need to breathe anyway. You won't be wasting your life. We are breathing it, but we breathe the wrong way. We don't know how to breathe. You see, we have to learn to breathe to change even the influence of the weather and the climate within ourselves. There are people who have studied the life of Paramahansa Yogananda, and from my recollection of reading his books, or the books written about him, I'm not sure whether he wrote them or not, he could, if he was in a cold environment, he could make himself warm, and if he were warm, in a warm environment, he could make himself cold, and he, he um, couldn't understand why other people couldn't do that as well. Yeah, it's exactly what, this is the knowledge that he was teaching to the world, you know. It's uh, learning to breathe properly. Because within ourselves, we have a refrigerator. And within ourselves, we have an oven. We have both. Everything is inside of us. You know, it's, it depends on how we use the electricity within, the fire within, the solar energy within, you know. We can reverse certain conditions within our own organism. Learning to breathe properly. It's, it's knowledge, you know. And the universal sound, which is the subject of this lecture, is basically God using vibration to create the entire universe, right? That's correct. It's the manifestation of the divinity. But we can do that on our own level. Yes, yeah. of course. We can contribute because God doesn't want us to be his followers. Listen to this. God wants us to learn to be leaders also. Leaders of ourselves. To stop being wimpy, to learn to be courageous. Okay, God doesn't want naive children. Even you know Jesus Christ was teaching in the Bible. We have to learn to be peaceful as a dove and astute as a snake, because we are dealing with a lot of astute individuals in the world who are with bad intentions. So we have to know how to protect ourselves. And those bad intentions are based on ignorance. Some people believe that committing crimes is okay. You know, there are many schools of esoteric stuff that teach esotericism the wrong way. They say there is nothing good, there is nothing bad. Wrong, wrong. There are cosmic laws in the universe that we have to learn to respect. That is good and that is evil. There is knowledge and there is ignorance. It's important to understand that, you know. Nothing, nothing is the way, you know, many people believe or pretend it is, you know. So we have to learn to be free-spirited individuals. And of course, our boss is within. God is within ourselves. It's also outside. But then we have to learn to be leaders of ourselves. You know, we have to learn to command ourselves to defeat our inferior nature and to ascend into a superior stage so we can tune with our spirit. So matter can be transformed, can be spiritualized, and also our spirit can be crystallized so we become one. Between the fire and the water, we become one force, which is light. 
electricity. Thank you very much for downloading this podcast. This is Gnostic Lectures number 14, The Universal Sound. And our website, of course, is rickyradio.com. If you care to communicate with us, the email is gnosticradio at gmail.com. My name is Richard Rucroft. My guest today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. Thank you very much.